Hello viewers, welcome to today's edition of From the Dailies. My name is Alex Enemanna. Uh, this is your darling station, SGTV. We have very interesting uh, headlines today, but what seems to dominate some of the dailies uh, is the issue of COVID-19. Uh, we have with me in the studio, John Adeyemi. Ah. Welcome, sir. My pleasure to be here. Uh, how do you feel about the issue of uh, COVID-19? It seems to dominate uh, our national discourse today. I mean, uh, are you scared? Well, I, I am not, but uh, I'm actually concerned. I'm concerned because we're in a nation where we find it difficult to adhere to instructions and uh, to keep to the precautionary I mean, measures that have been read out to us by the Federal Minister of uh, Health. And in fact, uh, that's, that is really an issue of concern because Daily Trust seems to highlight what you just raised now. It says no testing center in four geopolitical zones. How do you react to that? Well, uh, I'm not surprised to hear this, but uh, I must say very clearly that governors in such states should immediately take actions to foster what will be so difficult for us uh, to handle. It's a normal Nigerian situation that when we have issues like this, we don't take serious actions until we begin to I mean, record victims of sin. So if world power have actually faced very serious challenge combating I mean, this uh, pandemic, I think it is advisable uh, would you, to take it more seriously. Would you now say it's a, it's a kind of indictment on the federal government for not uh, putting in place some of these machineries to uh, checkmate uh, the spread of uh, as much as four out of six geopolitical zones, four do not have uh, 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 testing centers. I mean, well, uh, it may not completely be an indictment on the federal government, but at the same time, we cannot exonerate the federal government from whatever that uh, becomes the, I mean, outcome of ill preparedness. I mean, for combating this because the news has been on for a while. We have seen. I mean, states in the Europe, in the American countries, and I mean, every other part of the world, preparing, actually struggling to combat very, uh, this very dangerous uh, scourge. So I believe that uh, as a nation, we must take this very seriously if we actually must survive. Mm -hmm. Okay, we also have uh, on daily trust, after 87 days, Darius returns to Jalingo, that's the governor of uh, Taraba State. He has been away for some time uh, in, on. Uh, I think uh, it has to do with uh, uh, medical issues. He had to travel outside the country, then came back and stayed in Abuja for some time. Uh, how do you react to that? Well, uh, health, they say, is wealth. Mm. But uh, of course, for a governor, a chief executive of a state, to travel for its seven days, of course, is a way of explaining clearly a failure of a governance, particularly in the health sector. Because we expect that uh, in this generation, the governor should be able to, I mean, uh, improve on facility, infrastructure, infrastructure. But it's not that it's not the only person. Even our president had to at a point. When I mean a governor now, I don't. I'm not. In, I'm in talking particularly about Taraba. I'm talking to every other governor involved, and of course, the presidency mm. is actually baffles mm. one mm. when uh, you see people govern mm. and. Uh, they, they, they seem not to understand how to uh, actually provide infrastructure that they can benefit from. Mm. Unfortunately, if it was a, uh, an incident of emergency that happened in Taraba, only God knows what would have happened to the governor. And then God is back to work, yes. and we expect him to take this seriously now and actually revamp uh, the health infrastructure of Taraba State, not just for his own benefit, mm. but for the benefit of okay. the people of the state. But we also have the uh, bandit kill system in Zamfara villages. Well, the, the killing in Zamfara and the rest part of the northwest and now even in Nigeria, you know, if it is not banditry, it will be Boko Haram. If it is not Boko Haram, it will be kidnappers. If it is not kidnappers, it will be explosion in Lagos. If it is not explosion, you see, we have a lot of issues in our hand and that cause for serious concern. And particularly for a state like Zamfara, where we have had recurrent of such issues, mm. it is important that uh, the governor sit tight as the chief security officer of the state, and it is important that the federal government also, I mean, look for other means of solving this uh, situation that appear 
to continue to happen unabated. Is it that uh, the, from what we observe now, it seems that the Northwest seems to th uh, be on the lead. I mean, we know that Boko Haram used to have the North Central, uh, not uh, uh, North East, but then it seems that the paradigm is gradually shifting from North yeah, not east to not uh, not uh, not west. Not west. Yes. A a anyway, it's actually a national issue. But uh, the reason why you see more of such cases happening in the northwest, in the northeast, is because over the years there have been this neglect of young persons mm. that we all refer to as our majorities. Of course, when we have a system that does not care for the youth, when we have a system that does not provide survival, I mean, opportunity for the youth, of course. As human beings, of course, we, we, we all have survival instinct and we must do something to survive. So people that are now bandits are surviving because we have government, successive government that have not shown readiness to pick them away from the street and make them to be productive in their life. In their life. Uh, this, this one says, Buhari to military, end insurgency immediately. Is it a matter of giving instruction? I mean, some people say the president should be on the front lead in ending the insurgency. I mean, giving them charge to end the insurgency, is it enough? I mean, we want to see the president in action. We want to see the president go to northeast. We want to see them identify with the military there instead of sitting back to give instruction. Uh, there, there's something we seem not to be understanding mm -hmm. as, a, as a people. The, the, to, for me, ending insurgency has completely nothing to do with it. I mean, it, it does not entirely dwell on how we handle the barriers of the gun or our weaponry. No, it has to do with, I mean, cutting the recruitment pool of these insurgents. It is important as a nation that we look at how Boko Haram sect recruits that large number of people. Mm -hmm. We have heard our military kill so many insurgents. Now, the question anybody should ask is that why do we have this repeat? I mean, the same number increasing, increasing. by the day. Yes. So it means that we must look at it from the source. It means that this pool of youth in the Northeast and in the Northwest that are, of course, not gainfully engaged, we must do something about them. Because they are appear to be this unabated recruitment process of Boko Haram in the Northeast that makes them to continue to have this army of young persons. So would, would, would you not say this is a, 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 as a result of the growth or in unemployment rate? It's a successive, it's a, it's a result of a successive systemic failure. Of course, when you see young persons growing, some other ones coming up, and nobody is talking about how they can be engaged, nobody is talking about how they can be educated, nobody is talking about how they can be given that moral upbringing that can make them to believe in their nation Nigeria. And of course, our porous borders too. It's another issue that we must look at. Everything must not be about, I mean, the army, it must not be about, I mean, carrying guns. We have to look at the ideological parts that uh, is making Boko Haram to thrive in the Northeast. Now, let's look at what leadership Friday has. We have uh, oil price leap to 30.17 dollar after days of heavy losses. How do you react to that? It's a bit of good news for Nigeria, but that is not to say that we should not uh, look outside oil as, a, as our mainstay. Unfortunately, as a nation that has this number of population, we should not be in the business of oil alone as a source of our mainstay. But it seems to be that sometimes when you hear about the government that the diversification of the economy seems to be a lip service because we don't see much of uh, the outcome, especially in the area of agriculture and the mining. It, may, it seems to be, you know, diversification without a clear no cut idea. Yes. The reason why it appears like that is because there, is, there has been this disconnect between the public and the government. For instance, we have had beautiful agencies of government with beautiful, beautiful programs, rolling out millions of naira in forms of a, a, a loans. For instance, NISA has given out several millions of naira as, as loans, and we have not seen the concomitant effect on our agricultural development. The reason is because the process for these uh, grants has been politicized. Mm -hmm. The process, the real persons that need these loans are not getting it. And the persons that are getting in are actually not making judicial use of this. So it is important for government to look at uh, the process of its policy implementation. It's, it's not all about having beautiful policy, mm. policies. It's about 
for money of, for monitoring could monitoring, be the yes. implementation mm. and of course even when you give those loans out to you must also monitor how they have invested mm. such loans mm. you must monitor the process of growth of the business mm. it's not just giving it out as if you have a, i mean giving it out to anybody to just uh, go and uh, live their life coronavirus fg shuts down varsity's unity schools airports i mean the it seems the as they goes as days go by I mean, the effects continue to, you know, increase. I mean, look at universities now shutting down. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful idea that is coming a bit late. But you see, it's never. I mean, it's. it's and don't forget the issue. Never. Don't forget the issue of acid strike. Coupled with this now, I mean, the students may have to wait for a very long time before they come back well, to the classroom. Well, the issue of ASU, I, 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 I have at uh, different occasions described the action of ASU as grossly responsible and a, an attempt to blackmail government. I, I will not be on the part of ASU or, or on the side of ASU as long as the issue of I PPIS continue to be part of the demand of ASU. It is to all, some of us, uh, an open admittance of fraud and corruption in the university admission system. When you say you don't want to join the IPPIS, it is only in this part of the world that I see people resisting process of automation that can bring accountability, fiscal responsibility, and development. Mm. So unfortunately, it should not be the intellectual arm of our nation that will want to hold the government by the jugular with an attempt of strike. And I think, uh, for me, I, I, I do not support, uh, I mean, the strike. This cost owes 230 billion, 230 billion naira under invested by 164 billion naira, according to NEC. Well, uh, the issue of DISCO, DISCO is, uh, for me, is the biggest fraud that has happened to Nigeria. I, I stand to be challenged. This co collects money from poor people in the name of supplying electricity they do not get. And yet, they still hold that figure. But there has been a, a significant rollout of a, a metering system which some people enjoy today. Well, I may not be competent enough to talk about that because I'm actually in court on the issue of a metering against this co. I, I belong to the school of thought that, that believe very strongly that uh, uh, the prepaid meter is supposed to be for free and not uh, for some uh, kind of cash that this school is doing. But uh, the matter is in court and I will know that uh, uh, the court will do justice to that. Now, Delison says, fair price adjustment records partial compliance. Uh, well, uh, for, we must first of all commend governments for the, com for the audacity yes. to first of all take this bold step uh, at reduce, reducing the cost of, I mean, uh, fuel because of course it's a product whose price is determined by the inter uh, international market forces. And since the cost of uh, 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 refining and uh, I mean transporting has gone down, it is natural that uh, the price of uh, PMS, the pump price, be reduced. But uh, you should know the Nigerian factor, even though government has made pronouncement that they have reduced there, 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 should be a, there, there should be an enforcement to make the if it has to do with upward increment of uh, the, 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 the they will comply we have had as a nation and that we are still having is that of a poor regulatory system mm -hmm. the reason why everything seems not to be working is because we have regulators that are either accomplices or that are not alive to their responsibilities that's why we have all these issues now we have Lagos explosion, 100 displaced persons in relief camp, according to LASEMA. I mean, is there anything for the federal government can do to help them? Some people have criticized the government, especially the President Mwanamwa, for not identifying with the victims of uh, this very, I mean, the President has not till now visited the victims and he has not, uh, you know, shown that they are of utmost importance to him as the number one person in the world. Do you react to that? Well, well uh, it's unfortunate that we lost so many people over what actually uh, could have been uh, averted because if we have uh, it still has to do with the uh, issue of a uh, regulatory system regulation you see i am aware that if there are proper regulations in place we should not have people building houses around pipeline but uh, and at the same time if we have sound emergency system in place if the people have uh, violated the law and the same thing happens to them it doesn't mean that it's still not Nigeria. But this, this land, we should care for them. These lands we allocated. I mean, they were allocated, and the government possibly to collect their money for them, then allow the people to build. Would you that, say that, that's exactly what we are saying? But are we not actually, I mean, uh, be inhuman to talk about uh, entirely the regulation when we don't discuss about victim of uh, that unfortunate explosion? It is important that uh, 
uh, national emergency agency step up their game to make sure that uh, uh, these persons get back their life, yes. get back to normal life, mm. because it is a uh, Actually, an occurrence that was due to no fault of theirs. Now, and, uh, now, actually, it's sympathized with them. Let's look at the issue of uh, APC. Uh, the, this day says APC Reconciliation Committee begins work, receives 150 memoranda. Well, uh, in political party system, particularly in Nigeria, uh, it's a place where there is crisis, and it's a, when there is crisis, their system provides for reconciliation. After they have done the drama, after the court processes, it is not a bad idea if they decide to move forward as a political party. The reason is this, if APC is not uh, focused, it has its way of affecting a process of governance in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we enjoin them to quickly reconcile their crisis and face business of governance. Nigerians are actually yearning for good governance. Nigerians are actually yearning for those uh, dividends of democracy they promised the people. So. In the now, of crisis, now, some, some people have said the APC is heading to the rock with whether a shameful wins or it doesn't. I mean, people who are already aggrieved, we already we have already seen the former governor of Ekiti State making his way out of the party. Some people are actually doing the same line with him. Would you say it will be a minus for uh, APC whether a shameful survives or not? You see, the, the, the issue with the political party system in Nigeria is such that uh, the process of cross carpeting is one that is endless. The same way they are treating issues in APC, other political parties also have issues that will make their members to also cross to the other side. So, political party issues in Nigeria is not what anybody can want to be prophetic about. Mm -hmm. But what is important mm -hmm. is that APC must be up and doing to offer good governance. And opposition party also must be alive to offer that uh, opposition role so that governance, I mean, good governance. Can actually be the lot of Nigeria. But we have uh, we have seen uh, PDP in these days offering alternatives to the APC, especially uh, on the issue of uh, coronavirus. We have seen the government, we have seen the opposition party say, "This is what you can do better." When the issue of uh, uh, Ebola came in, we took a pro we took proactive step. Uh, we couldn't allow it to escalate much, but today we are recording up to 12 uh, uh, victims already. Would you say that? I mean, I wouldn't want to believe that PDP is not offering much. Well. Uh, it's actually uh, that statement is relative, and uh, I, I I must say that uh, uh, the, the, if, I mean based on the statements you have made, mm -hmm. it's not a bad idea, but it's also good that uh, you offer more I mean uh, incisive opposition, mm -hmm. so that the uh, government can be I mean can be put on their toes to to to, to perform. Now we have Tribune. Tribune says federal government federal government moves to resettle North East IDPs in FCT. Well. To reset to IDPs, brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. But in FCT, maybe we need to understand the details before we jump into. I mean, agreeing whether it's good or not. But I, I, I can't imagine where that land is in FCT. I think the best idea is to reset to not not just IDPs in their ancestral homes. But do you reset to people where there's still no security? So there's still much to be done. And uh, I think uh, we should face uh, the reality so that these IDPs don't suffer. On told as if that I mean much more than that which they have suffered. Now Trump fast tracks chloroquine as drug for coronavirus. Would you say we should adopt chloroquine too? You see, to me it's a huge relief. We have a scientist here, we have a various government agencies that are responsible for that. They should review the issues and see how it can assist Nigeria. Because we, I must confess to you that uh, with what I mean the cases we have recorded, it's actually one that should make any discerning mind mm -hmm. to be concerned, particularly with the very, I mean, with the way we respond to issues as a country, mm -hmm. not just to the corona, I mean, COVID-19, mm -hmm. but to all other issues. Mm -hmm. It is important we take this very seriously mm -hmm. because uh, Nigeria is a highly populated nation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we are a nation that uh, are careless when it comes to environmental issues. We don't take them seriously. So the tendency of the spread, mm -hmm. if we don't manage it, mm -hmm can actually happen here, mm -hmm. but we pray mm -hmm. it doesn't happen. We thank you so much, Alabode, for joining us. It's been glad, we've, we are glad to have you in our studio. My pleasure. Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much.